the worst housing crash in a hundred years has just started and today i'm going to do a deep dive into the most recent data that exists within south palm beach county within the markets that i serve and i'll drill down into the major cities that exist within south palm beach county so that you know the truth as to what's happening right now as of the most recent data because the truth is anybody can tell you a story and anyone can take data and manipulate it to create a narrative to confirm what you want to hear and i'm not here to tell anybody what they want to hear i'm here to tell everyone what they must know i'm here to tell everyone the truth about what's actually happening right now in my housing markets and I say Mark gets because the macro pictures are distorted and they tell a very different story than the mini markets or the micro markets that exist within the macro number. And so today we're going to do a deep dive into that data, into those numbers, because those numbers do not lie. But having been a stockbroker for 20 years and having experienced the great financial crisis, I spoke to clients on a daily basis who were suffering real-time losses across the board in the equities markets. And when the markets are dropping by hundreds of points and their accounts were dropping by hundreds or millions of dollars in days, sometimes hours, sometimes minutes, because when the bottom falls out of the stock market, it falls out completely. And while that eventually happens in the housing market, it doesn't happen anywhere near as fast. So when the financial markets finally do get eviscerated and there is blood in the streets, to quote Warren Buffett, if you're expecting housing or real estate market to trade in parity with that, it's not going to happen because that's not the way real estate or the housing market trades. It takes time to catch up. And when those financial markets do get hit, you can set the timer as to when the housing market will eventually catch up and you will find half price homes or fire sale discounts. And please mark my words because it is very predictable. It's going to take about five years from the bad things that happen in the stock market or financial markets or markets that price in change in real time when those markets go bust, you can expect about five years later, housing will catch up. And it's critical to understand what's happening right now in terms of leading market indicators to know what is eventually going to happen in the housing markets. So I think it's particularly helpful to pay attention to corporate earnings. And look at the major retailers. Look at what their earnings are. Look and see what their guidance is. Is it better or worse? Because unlike politicians who have a vested interest in not freaking out the market, publicly traded companies have a fiduciary responsibility to their shareholders. And they must tell the truth. And they must provide guidance based on the real numbers that they see today. And to be abundantly clear, not every corporation is going to do that. You might remember Enron. They were cooking the books. And I'm sure that right now there are corporations, major corporations, that are playing games with their numbers. They are looking to sugarcoat the future as much as they possibly can within the boundaries of what is legally acceptable and analysts will play their games, and some of these corporate leadership teams will play their games too. But the biggest offender of not telling the truth right now in terms of financial guidance is the U.S. government. And this whole debt ceiling crisis, which is a total disaster fiscally, because the Treasury does not produce income unless they generate it through higher taxes, but right now, the deficit is insane, and our global credit score is in the shitter. And I'll put this in the most basic terms that I possibly can in order to illustrate the point. Right now, the U.S. government has about $200,000 of cash in the bank. And to be clear, I'm making up numbers. But they've got $2 million worth of debt. 
at insanely high rates. And the creditors of that debt, at some point, are going to demand payment. But there's no money to pay them with. But not to worry. We'll just issue you some more credit. Sounds like an amazing business plan, right? But let's put that debt to the side for a second. And let's remember that that small amount of money that the Treasury does have in the bank has to fund Social Security, entitlements, and every other thing that they must pay for in order to keep the country running. Did I mention they don't have any money? So when the commercial real estate space implodes, and it is, and the pension funds and the sector must be bailed out, and Social Security must be bailed out too, where are they getting this money from? And I've heard the recent claims about California and other municipalities considering the possibility of offering reparations to the tunes of millions of dollars to people who qualify for it. Where do you think the government's going to get this money from? The money that they don't have? They're getting it from you. They're getting it from me. They're getting it from higher taxes. But when the stock market crashes and the black swan events that are predictable happen and the consumer does not feel safe, does not feel secure, does not feel equity rich, because right now, most homeowners have a metric shit ton of equity that makes them feel wealthy. When all of that goes poof, and it will, Big Papa Powell and whoever else is in charge is going to need to write out a check that their ass can't cash. And we'll be facing the biggest housing market and financial market crash in our lifetime. And when the dust clears, and when stability is restored, all of those markets that got wiped out will eventually go higher. And eventually, the markets that got eviscerated will trade at all-time highs. But depending on how old you are, you might not be able to be here for that inevitable conclusion, which is terrifying to me because I'm not that young. And it's terrifying to me because my kids are. But the generational debt that their ass is going to have to pay for our reckless policies today and in the recent past makes me sick. But as far as politics are concerned, whoever tells the biggest lie wins. And we're seeing this right now on the corporate level from our good friends over at Disney. And right now, Disney's Bob Iger is blaming all of Disney's financial failures on Governor Ron DeSantis because it's such an easy target and it's such a believable story. But the market is always right and the market will always dictate price. And all you need to do is look at the stock price for Disney to know that the market has rejected some of what their business decisions have been. But the truth around that particular hot button issue is that Disney made bad business decisions and the market and the market clearly rejected them. And the stock price reflects that. And anything outside of that is utter and complete nonsense. But here is what is not nonsense. Although I can make the argument that the inflation numbers that they actually report are underreported, the numbers that they did report are no bueno. And that's not nonsense. Inflation rose 0.4% in April and 4.7% from a year ago, according to key gauge from the Fed. That's if you believe the way that they are measuring inflation. And the way they are measuring inflation has changed radically since the Clinton years. And that's just what it is. So I believe these numbers are underrepresented, but what they presented is bad enough. Just know that it's worse. But despite the higher inflation rate, consumer spending held up as well as personal income increased. Spending jumped 0.8% for the month and personal income accelerated by 0.4%. Now, to be abundantly clear, I don't know how they came up with those metrics. Frankly, it is above my pay grade. But I do know that their proclivity to distorting numbers is high. So I don't buy what these numbers are. I just know they're not good. And I also know that if personal spending has increased, it's because credit cards are being maxed out. 
because personal savings is at an all-time low. And although there are no distressed sales in the Florida market yet, there's definitely going to be personal financial distress, which creates a sale, which forces the consumer to get rid of the only thing they have left that has equity. And in case you don't know what that is, it is most likely going to be their house. And supply and demand will always dictate price. And let's just take a little look-see at what mortgage interest rates are. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I've talked about mortgage interest rates going significantly higher. And although I do believe that they will play some games in order to bring down mortgage interest rates so they've got a better shot of getting reelected, I do think towards the end of the year, we will likely have interest rates that are trading closer to the fives than higher than the sevens. But I could be wrong. The data that gets reported could in fact be so bad that they can't manipulate the system and they can't stimulate the market and mortgage interest rates don't go down, they go straight up. Yet to be determined, I don't know, but I do suspect we're going to be looking at 10% interest rates at some point in the near future. But as of today, according to Mortgage News Daily, the 30-year fixed is at 7.12%. 7 Two. If you've got perfect credit, and if you do have perfect credit, guess what? You get to subsidize the people who don't have perfect credit. You get to pay some of their bill because socialism is phenomenal and it benefits everybody equally, right? I guess the market will tell us and we will soon find out. Which takes us to what the current market is as of the most recent numbers which have been published by the florida realtor association by the mls and to be clear this is old this is lagging it's the most current data that exists which will tell us exactly what's happening right now as of today's date but the truth is most agents don't even know what happened last month let alone what's happening right now but I'm going to share both so that you're empowered with the best information to make the best decisions for yourself, for your family, and for your financial bottom line. Closed sales, and we're talking about South Palm Beach County, we're talking about single family homes, and we're talking about April. But closed sales were down 21.2%. What does that mean? It means there were 21% less sales, which means there's a lot of folks on the fringe that are in the industry that are going to be going bye-bye because they don't have any production. Median sales price is up 2.6%. The average sales price, which I think is more indicative of what the prices are for most people who call me looking to buy a home, the average sales price is down 8.5% from a touch over a million in South Palm Beach County to 925 and change. That is a trend we must pay attention to. That is something we need to see if it develops a pattern of, because I know with mortgage interest rates at 7%, there are less buyers qualified to buy a home that can afford to buy a home which does not mean there is not demand. It does mean there are less shoppers. Dollar volume down 28%. Percent of original list price received is down 7.6% to 93%. The days of 100% are over unless you price your home the right way. Median time to contract is up 271%. 26 days versus seven, that is a return to normal. Pending sales are down 5%. New listings are down almost 28% in South Palm Beach County. I can tell you that new listings in most markets, and I cover all 22 metros in the state of Florida, there is a short supply of new listings. Well, why is that? It's because mortgage interest rates are at 7.13%. Nobody in a 2, 3, 4, 5, or anything less than 7% mortgage is interested in trading up into a higher monthly payment. They will avoid that at all costs. They will make life changes 
because of it. They might not buy the bigger house that they would like to. That would suit them better because they're not going to make themselves house poor. Ain't nobody trading out of a 2 3 4% mortgage interest rate unless they have to. Unless the financial pain of this recession and inflation and whatever the next bad domino to fall falls when the financial pain becomes unbearable enough, they will inevitably sell their home. And when that happens, the equity that they think they have is likely to be far less than it is today. And why is that? It's because most of the folks that fit that criteria are all going to feel the same pain right around the same time. And you're going to see a massive uptick in supply of inventory. It won't be the bank forcing the sale. It will be the lack of funds in their bank account, which will force the sale. It's not going to be a distressed sale in traditional terms. It's going to be a distressed seller who must sell in order to feed their family and keep their cars. That's the truth. And if they lose their job, and I suspect unemployment is going to be far closer to 10% than whatever the numbers they're lying about are now, in the near future, if that is in fact the case, well, that number reminds me of what the number was when the last great crash happened. Because the last time the market fell by 30% after the great financial crisis, it was due to the fact that 10% of the sales throughout the country were in distress. It only took 10% of the homes that were for sale to be in distress to bring down the market by 30% on a national level. And those numbers were far more dramatic depending on which market you happen to be in. But it only took 10% of the market to be in distress. And although I don't think the homes are going to go negative and the bank is going to foreclose, I think far more than 10% of homeowners are going to be in personal financial distress. And when that happens, there will be a massive uptick in the supply of homes. And depending on how bad the severity of all the other market crashes that are likely going to happen soon, and how quickly the next 10 banks fail, there will be tremendous financial and personal distress coming soon. And that distress will create the biggest housing crash we've seen in 100 years. But that's not today. As of April, the inventory of homes for sale upticked 27%. And the month's supply of inventory upticked 64.7% to 2.8 months. And so we've seen a pattern on the supply side of homes sitting on the market unsold for significantly longer. And we've seen the supply side remain challenged in terms of homes being listed for sale. And yet there is still robust demand within my markets because there are so many folks that want to escape wherever they're at and be in Florida now. They want to max out their best life now. And they're not particularly concerned or afraid about what the future looks like or when they can time the bottom of the market. For some folks, those things are irrelevant. But as of April of 2023, which again is a month old, in Boynton Beach, the city that I live, median sales price is down almost 10%. Average sales price is down almost 11%. New listings are down almost 28%. And the inventory of homes for sale is up 60%. April was no bueno in Boynton Beach. However, markets that trade within Boynton Beach traded very differently. So it is critical to understand the hyper-local market that you're shopping in, because although these numbers are no bueno, depending on where you're shopping, the market conditions can be completely different. But the trend is not your friend if you're thinking about selling, and the trend is definitively your friend if you're thinking about buying. Which takes us to Delray Beach numbers, single family homes in April, median sales price down 5.5%. Average sales price up 2.1%. We're seeing volatility. Closed sales were down 5%. Pending sales are down almost 2%. 
but new listings are down 23%. Inventory of homes for sale up 44%. Month supply of inventory up 94%. The trend is not your friend if you're thinking about selling. And the trend is definitely your friend if you're thinking about buying. But much like every other market that I talk about, the hyper-local market conditions are going to be very different no matter which city you're shopping in. And although Delray Beach numbers are a mixed bag in terms of average and median sales price, and there's volatility, there are some markets within Delray which are extreme seller's markets. And the equal and opposite is true too. There are markets within Delray which are extreme buyer's markets. But this is what it was for April. Which takes us to Boca Raton, Florida. And again, this is single family homes only. Closed sales down 17%. Median sales price down 0.2%. And the average sales price was down almost 4%. New listings down 26%. Inventory of homes for sale up almost 30%. Month supply of inventory up 72%. No bueno if you're thinking about selling. Muy bueno if you're thinking about buying. Now, I hope you found this content valuable. And if you did, please subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Twitter. I will reply to all comments on Twitter. If you're thinking about buying or selling, please reach out because we would love to help. And check out my next video because I suspect you will love it a lot. And until next time, peace.